Whales are the largest animals that have ever existed, the largest of which, the blue whale, have individuals exceeding 27 meters, which is the same length as two school buses. They are heavier than even the largest dinosaurs at 190 tons, weighing more than 32 African elephants, and their heart is so big a human diver could comfortably swim through their aorta. They are surely one of the most majestic dynasties of animals, but like all living things they eventually die. But what happens to their massive body when they do eventually meet their end? Unlike the death of cartilaginous fish, like a shark or a ray, bony fish and mammals can float for a few hours or even days before sinking. In the case of whales this is because of gases that build up in their stomach causing them to float for a while. During this period lots of meat eating creatures will seize the opportunity for an easy meal and swarm the carcass. These creatures would include many different species of shark including great whites. The meat they scavenge from dead whales possibly making up quite a large amount of their diet. Eventually the whale will sink though and offer an incredibly large source of food for ocean goers. If this occurs in shallow sea, then it will most likely be feast upon by the same sharks and fish eating it at the surface. Because of the types of animals eating it and its placement in the ocean, the whale will be consumed relatively quickly. If the whale dies in open ocean, like most of them do, the carcass will eventually descend further and further down until reaching the bottom of the ocean. When this happens in nature, it is known as a whale fall. The water down at these depths is far colder and the pressure is considerably higher, which drastically decreases the speed of decomposition. This means that the body of these whales can last as long as many decades. The ocean floor on average has a low amount of food falling down, so a whale carcass is a very, very large change. The amount of carbon tied up in a whale carcass is roughly equivalent to the amount of carbon that falls to 10 square kilometers of seabed in 150 years. This drastic change in available food means a small ecosystem will form around the whale on the ocean floor. In fact, a study noted that one whale carcass was supporting over 12,000 individual organisms from an estimated 43 different species. The majority of whale falls go through three stages of decomposition. The first stage is when the mobile scavengers ascend on the whale to eat the soft tissue. These will be animals similar to the scavengers at the surface, but adapted to handling the high pressures of the deep. This includes animals like hagfish that are eel-shaped and primitive fish that have remained very similar looking for 300 million years and have no jaw. Also seen at the whale carcasses are massive deep sea sharks known as six kill sharks that can grow up to seven meters long and sleeper sharks that aren't much shorter. This stage can last around two years and when it is finished you will be left with a whale skeleton. The second stage takes place once the whale is almost stripped bare and is where animals can colonize the bones to get the organic materials left on from contamination with the soft tissue. It is also when the last bits of tissue left over by other animals are consumed by various crustaceans and worms. This second process also takes around two years. The final stage is known as the sulfophilic stage, named because of all the hydrogen sulfide that is produced by the bacteria consuming the fat inside the whale bones. If you've seen an image of a whale carcass before, this is a yellow stuff that surrounds the bones. This stage of the whale fall attracts a group of creatures known as chemaltotrophic organisms. These small beings are able to turn chemicals into usable energy. In the case of whales, they are consuming the hydrogen sulfide and turning it into usable energy. Researchers have found very similar chemaltotrophic colonies, but not on whales and instead of inhabiting hydrothermic vents as they also release hydrogen sulfide. At this stage the whale becomes a true ecosystem as there are several layers of creatures surviving off one another and this can last for 10 to 50 years depending on the size of the whale carcass. One of the strangest organisms found at the whale falls are a genus of very odd worm called Osidax, informally known as zombie worms. These worms look a lot like plants and do not have mouths. They have appendages at their top that extract oxygen from the water like gills and a root extends inside the bone like the roots of a tree. They are successful creatures and have many different species spreading across many different oceans. The key to their success seems to be that they can directly eat the whale fat rather than relying on the hydrogen sulfide made up by bacteria like the other organisms. As they don't have mouths, they rely on a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria that breaks down the fat inside the whale bones and which the worms gather usable nutrients from. Zombie worms were thought to have co-evolved with whales and as such thought to have existed for around 45 million years but it turns out they may be significantly older and may date back to around 100 million years ago when the dinosaurs were still around. Similar holes to the ones they leave behind on whale bones are found on fossils of large marine reptiles like plesiosaurs dating back much further than whales have ever existed. 
This has led some scientists to believe that these animals are not the whale specialists once thought, and probably fed on marine reptiles too. It is also possible that the zombie worms from the past may have evolved in a similar way, and their relation to the current zombie worms may just be superficial. So although whales eventually die, they become their own ecosystems and support many different species for decades to come. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this video and would like to be notified of future uploads, then consider subscribing.